Hey guys, welcome back to a new story time video. I do beauty videos all week, but then um, I think three or four months ago, I decided that I was gonna do story times on the weekend. So every once in a while on a weekend, there's gonna be a video like this. If you don't care for this kind of videos, or if you just don't wanna watch them, there's gonna be a regular beauty videos throughout the week. And I'll link the playlist for this week's videos in the description box down below if you're interested to check that out. So. Um, today it's gonna be on the topic that we were talking about in my last video if you missed it I'll link it up here also talk about um, what you should expect from this kind of videos I am a Christian and I am a mother of four kids I have my oldest is 17 my youngest is 10 I have three boys and a girl and this story time is just gonna tell you different things that I went through and you know the outcome of every situation how I felt what I did and this by no means is going to teach you something but it's just gonna share with you my story and hopefully something that I say it's gonna help somebody else I have a few videos like this and I got a lot of feedback from people that were just anxious to see you know more videos like this because it helped them so I know it's not gonna help everyone but if anybody can you know I don't know be helped by my story or if encourage or something well that's the main goal with this kind of video so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. The topic that I mentioned before, it was the time where my son ran away. This was about three summers ago. It was my oldest one that is about to be 17. And um, it was during the summer. He got a new computer for his previous previous birthday and I remember that we had just that one computer and they would take turns, especially my two oldest boys. They were kind of taking turns to use the computer and play games. Now. That summer, since I started playing with the computer, I remember that it was kind of quiet. My two younger kids were playing outside during the day, so they were playing inside and they were playing with the computer, but it got to a point where I was kind of concerned because they were spending more time than I wanted them to be on the computer, but we were working just fine through that. Now, I remember that day when, when he ran away, they were fighting with my uh, my other son is uh, two years younger than him so he was probably 13 at the time 12 13 my second oldest and they were fighting over whose turn it was to play the computer now i try to stay away from that argument because they usually can find a way to solve the problem and if i get into it then i'm the one that is always going to look bad at the end so i try to let them deal with it and you know if it escalates to the point that they're yelling or something then i go in but just to calm things down and kind of help them find a you know solution for the problem now that day they were fighting over that and i was over here because i was cooking here in the kitchen and I was kind of over here and they were just kind of arguing about whose turn it was and what time one was playing and the other one wasn't and all that stuff. So my oldest came to me and started to kind of, he was trying to convince me that he was right and Michael, my second oldest, was wrong. So since I tried to stay away from it you know, or that situation, I told him, you know, just try to talk to Michael and be honest about it because if you spend 30 minutes and he spent 20 minutes it's only fair that he gets the 30 minutes because they were complaining about something like that what, what I was doing it was trying to you know make them both see that one of them was not being honest because if you're saying you played 30 minutes and the other one says that you were playing for 20 minutes or whatever the you know disagreement would be somebody maybe lost track of time but we can't really you know be so sure that we did 20 minutes instead of 30 because you know somebody was not being completely honest so that's what i wanted to let them know my oldest thought that since my example was including my my other son that he i was taking sides with him so he started to or he decided that the greatest idea ever was to start yelling at me and i don't yell at my kids i don't think that's the answer especially when they're teenagers it gets to the point that you have to reason with them and if you're gonna yell they usually kind of block whatever you're saying and they don't listen that's with my kids anyways 
So he started yelling and yelling and he was being mean and he was saying the worst things and you know at first I was trying to be like okay you need to calm down you need to think about what you're saying just go to your room think about it but it got to the point where he got me he said something that it hurt me so deeply that I can't even remember what it was um, and I started yelling back and he wasn't he's not used to me yelling back I you know, I'm the one that is always trying to make peace with whatever is going on, even if it's not fair. I try to, you know, kind of talk about it and not be aggravated and, or at least if I am, not show it. So, anyways, long story short, we started going back and forth. It got to the point where he felt like I was attacking him or, you know, that I was being mean to him or that I just, you know, I don't know what he felt but he went to his room grab a backpack put a few clothes in it and decided to leave the house through my back door and jump a fence and you know it was like he just wanted to let me know that he didn't want to be with me and it makes sense when you when you're arguing with somebody that you go to a different room and you kind of cool down before you want to keep talking to that person that's something that I always teach my kids you know if you're mad just cool down wait think wait 10 minutes, wait 15 minutes, wait 20 minutes, and then come back and talk about it. So it wasn't like that. He decided that he didn't, he told me that he didn't want to be with me anymore and that he was going to go live somewhere else. And he, you know, I remember being at the door and kind of paralyzed by what was going on. And at the same time, like my body wanted to move and grab him physically, sit him down and talk to him to, make him understand that it was a misunderstanding that i wasn't you know taking sides you know it, it just escalated so quickly that i wanted to do something to stop him from running away from home i didn't want him to wander in the streets i you know if you have a kid or if you have teenagers you know what i'm saying it's like you don't know what they're thinking you don't know what they're feeling you know all the hormones the emotions everything i remember being a teenager i mean it's not like it was you know five years ago but i remember being a teenager and i remember being frustrated and all the feelings and all the you know all those things that you go through your mind and i just i don't know what i didn't know what to think and i wanted to run and get him and get him inside and but i remember at that moment that I just couldn't move. I was paralyzed, I was scared, I was crying, I was desperate. I didn't know what to do. So I remember sitting in one of these couches over there and saying, God, what am I supposed to do with this? How can I fix it? And the first thing that came through my mind was to jump in my car and go get him. So I jump in my car and at that moment it was an out of this world experience. I remember that my hands got so tingly and so weak that I couldn't grab the steering wheel. It was something that made me physically stop, stop me from going in the car and going after him. At that moment, I didn't know if it was because I was having some kind of an anxiety attack. I just didn't know what to think of it. So I remember coming back inside from my garage, sitting here, and this overwhelming feeling of peace filled my body. Now you're probably thinking, hey, your son just ran away, he's mad at you, he is a teenager, and you're just sitting on the couch feeling peace in your body and it was like I didn't know where it came from all I could do was feel that peace in my body peace in my mind peace all over and I remember just walking to my porch and sitting on the stairs in the front of my house when this feeling came over me and told me that it was going to be okay. I felt like God told me, you love your son. I love him more, so get over yourself. I got it. You know, it was like 
God was showing me that there wasn't something I could do at that specific moment for this specific situation, but he was going to fix it. So I remember sitting on the stairs, feeling this overwhelming peace and just kind of praying, but praying not that he came back, but just, it was such an amazing experience. It was something that I've never felt before. It was like, I don't know, I get, you know, my skin, it's kind of crawling right now, but I've never felt like that. And about 20 minutes later, and you know, if I was anxious, probably 20 minutes would have felt like it was five days. But at that moment with the peace and the feeling that God actually told me, I got it, you know? You just sit here in my presence, feel the love that I have for you and feel the love that I have for your family or for your son. You know, it was like he was showing me, he was making me feel what he feels for me. And I can't help but share this story because I feel like when God wants to show you something, he wants to show you something. And no matter what you want to do, no matter how much I wanted to jump into that car and go after him, he did something so powerful in me that it stopped my body from moving to do what I wanted to do. I mean, how is that even possible? How did God did do that for did that for me? Or how I can't even explain that feeling. But I remember being in the presence of God. It was like feeling that confidence that what was happening it was in his hands and that he was going to fix it because no matter how much i love my son i know that he loves him more because he's not human he's perfect so after those 20 minutes my son came through my front door which he didn't he left it through the back door but he came through the front door running with his backpack with his eyes full of tears and he came and he hugged me and said i'm sorry mom i shouldn't have done that and you know it's at that moment when you are like what happened 20 minutes ago he hated me he was he didn't want to be with me and now there is this teenager who's hugging me so hard that it hurts and he's telling me that he loves me that he's sorry and that he was he made a mistake i mean how can you realize that in 20 minutes when you are a 15 year old or or just simply a teenager how can you realize that your mom was right and you were wrong and you can man up enough to go and tell your mom i am sorry i didn't mean to do it i don't know what happened through my mind at that moment i really love you and i want to live with you and i want to be here i'm sorry you know i relieved that moment in my mind over and over again all the time because I want to remember that no matter what you're feeling no matter what you think no matter what you are trying to accomplish I mean God is in the power I mean he has the power to change your mind within 20 minutes he has the power to stop physically your body to do something when it's his purpose and you know I sometimes I wonder is that what happened to Moses when God asked him to go talk to Pharaoh and, you know, ask to release Israel from slavery? Is that what he felt? Because it's such a powerful feeling. It's such a powerful experience that it's like you kind of 
do whatever you're supposed to do or what God wants you to do because there's no other way. There's no other thing that you can physically do or there's no other thing that you can think about but that. You know, it just makes me wonder because if you're if you're really thinking about it and you were Moses and you're like, I just killed a guy, I left, they're looking for me, I am living in the desert because I don't want people to see me because I'm running away from these people and now all of a sudden I'm just going to show up on, you know, and I'm going to talk to the Pharaoh like I did nothing and then I'm going to ask him, hey, can you let go of my people because I think it's time. I mean, think about it. There must be something that they were feeling. There must be something that they had inside them that made them do the things that they did because that if you don't have the spirit of god or if you don't have the guidance of god or if you don't have the confidence that god will make you succeed then there's no way that you're gonna do it there must be something that all the people from the bible that they were doing this amazing courageous things there was something that they were feeling or there was something that they were how did they do it i mean it's not human possible to do that with confidence there must be something and I just you know at a moment I kind of thought to myself is this what they really feel is this like a, a I don't know like a taste is this a pinch of of something that they were feeling back then or is this just to show me that you know God can do this and more for you. That God can, if you trust Him with your life, if you trust Him with your family, that He's got you, you know? And that's how I felt. And what an amazing feeling is when you can trust in somebody that, you know, is perfect. Because I trust my husband with my kids, I trust people with my kids, but how can I, can can I not trust God that he has my best interest for them and for me and for my family? This was such an amazing moment in my life that kind of changed the perspective of how I feel and how I ask things to God, how I pray, how I, you know, it's such an amazing testimony that made me realize that God made me feel it for a reason not only because of my situation but so I could share it with more people and kind of let them know that a relationship with God even in these times where everything looks like upside down you can still have that relationship with God you can str still trust Him uh, and for me trusting something with my kids is one of the things that it, it really is hard for me. It's hard. I want to be there. I want to be everywhere. I want to be the kind of mom that it's, you know, protecting her kids. I, I feel like I can do a lot of things, but God showed me that I'm not perfect, that I can't fix everything, and that I have to trust my kids, my family, my problems, and everything to Him because He's got me. Needless to say, my relationship changed with my son since that, since that day forward. We've been closer than ever in this past three years. We talk to each other a lot more. We trust each other a lot more. And I tell him this story and I tell him what happened while he wasn't here. And, you know, even though he doesn't tell me exactly what came to, through his mind, he said that he felt that he needed to come back home. I mean, if that is not something that amazes you or amazes me i don't know what could it be thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next video